Welcome to Red and Blue. I am Major Garrett in Washington. Tonight we bring you a special edition focused on our democracy, specifically how we cast and count ballots. All available evidence, from recounts to audits to court proceedings, show the 2020 election results remain valid. Despite this, a fair number of Americans, almost all aligned with former President Trump, deny or doubt these facts. Last week, I traveled to Phoenix to take part in a discussion about elections and their integrity. It was led by longtime political consultant and focus group moderator Frank Luntz. I want a word or phrase from each one of you to describe the election process in America today. Messed up. It's not who votes that counts, it's who counts the votes. Polarized. Fraudulent. Not kosher. Rigged. Questionable. Uh, seems like technology has uh, made it more complicated than made it easier. Soros or Democrat owned? Questionable. Dysfunctional. Scandalous. Um, like any process, needs improvement. Untrustworthy. Corrupt. I'm actually going to go to you guys. We weren't planning to do this as quickly. Mm -hmm. This is a problem. Sure. Who thinks that Trump won in 2020? Why? Well, listening to you, um, my first thought was we had ballot harvesting. We have video of people being sent home and suitcases being brought out from underneath tables. Where's the truth? We don't, you, you say it was a correct election, but who voted? Why do you think Trump won? Same, same sentiment he's explaining right now is at the end of the day, we had, we, we have all this technology and it takes weeks to get results in. You have cameras being shut off and all of a sudden a, a spike in votes come up. I mean, it shouldn't be that complicated. When I'm opening this up to anyone who's in the room right now, so if you want to be heard, in addition to our focus group participants, Raise your hand, I'll give you the mic, and we'll go right here. Why do Democrats think that Republicans are cheating all the time and Republicans think that, think that Democrats are cheating all the time? Do any, does anyone believe that a Republican, a very staunch Republican, can actually just say that this Democrat was honest and fair and did the right thing and, and vice versa? I, I, I just question where that, where that comes from. Go ahead. Who loses, who loses when both sides cheat? We do. The people lose. But so, so can you tell me an instance in your mind when you think a Republican cheated to win? Can, say again, sir? Can you give me an instance that's in your mind of when you remember or think a Republican cheated to win? You know, I can't, but okay. I, I was apolitical. I hated the stuff. And then I started paying attention just a couple of cycles ago. And now I've gone down the rabbit hole and it scares me. Okay. And it's important to understand, too, even if those votes were not tabulated there on site, everyone could put their votes into box three, and everyone who wanted to vote on election day, their votes counted. Okay, this is... So we're told. Do you believe him? No. No, no. not, okay. no, not no, believe for a second. Why not? We don't believe that somebody that sat in their basement had the greatest number of votes of any president of the United States either. That. It's okay. just... And he, when, and he talks about 2022, but if everything was working the night before and then it doesn't work on election day, well, who votes the most on election day? So, is Republicans. Why, yeah, so we, so when, when I woke up and heard... The issue is Republican. Why, why, why was it that, that um, you know, when they do the overlay, it was majority of Republican areas that had all the issues? It actually that, wasn't. So when we were going to do... You've been told that. that. So, all three of those elections set near records or new records for turnout. 2018 was the highest turnout in a midterm election in 100 years. 2020 was the highest ever. 2022 was nearly as high as 2018. What does higher turnout mean? It means more voters from more unexpected places and a more hard to read electorate. That also slows things down in terms of the media calling elections. Isn't that a good thing? On election Isn't that a good thing? No, no, okay. it's not. He, so he's talking about making sure they get it right. Yeah, yeah but, and you want them to rush. News, call the election for Biden with less than 1% of the Arizona vote counted. 
I'm sorry, yeah. you cannot yeah. make that call. Yeah. So I got, I, I've heard everybody hit this topic a couple of times and skim right over it. You just said it, you just said it, you just said it. My biggest problem is the last time I saw an election that I actually thought was going well mm -hmm. was when I was a young Marine and I was sitting overseas and I got my mail-in ballot. They gave it to me, I sent it in a couple of weeks ahead of time. They finally got it, they counted it, I'm pretty sure anyway. Um, and now I've watched, we go to all these absentee ballots. We've got, you said 30% of the population, 30%? 80, 85. 85. 85. Oh, no, this is ridiculous. It should not be that way. I mean, we can talk the technology issues, flipping a vote here, flipping a vote there. It, at the end of the day, we can only trust what our, you know, our technological experts tell us. But I think it goes further down than that. We can't trust this mail-in ballot stuff. This group here. How many of you think Kerry Lake was elected governor? Yeah. Pretty oh, much. I think they yeah. have their and shit I together. Work the it's just, it does repeat. Well, it, it's just what, ma'am? The same problems repeat between election cycles. Because there were some similarities what? What? last time to this time. Over over. Go ahead. How do, how do you elect somebody that won't even do a debate with the other candidate? She'll That's not the question. The question is who won? Yeah. But who's the, what I'm saying is I think she won because... If you look at all of the, um, the, debate, the debates that they tried to get together and she wouldn't um, but, debate but, but, her. But debates don't matter. Deba the debate's not the election. What are you doing so that this doubt, and it's real, as you can tell, and it's thoughtful whether or not you agree or disagree with it, this is your responsibility. What are you doing to address this? Yes, and so the way that we have addressed this, and I know some of you may not agree with this, but to run the most transparent elections that have ever been run in our state, we're opening the doors to folks. We have put out information in advance, dealing with things that have been debunked. And if, I, if you do one thing for me, please go to justthefacts.vote tonight or at some other point, you'll see a lot of these things. We don't have time to go through all of the ways Say that, that we've debunked it. Just the vote, just the facts dot vote. Please go there and when you read it and you have more questions, call me or come down. We'll walk you through. I'm curious, and this is a real question. Did you think it was appropriate for Donald Trump to do something that no other president has done? He didn't show up to see his successor inaugurated. No. Was that appropriate? No. no. What would you tell him? Because you, because it because it goes along the lines of what people are talking. You still have to be civil, whether you agree with it or disagree with it. You still have you still have to be civil to each other. So, uh, as much as I was a fan of Trump during his one term, uh, and if he does get the nomination, he will get my vote again in 2024, hands down. But for him to not show up is like a two-year-old throwing a temper tantrum because they didn't get their toy. Mm -hmm. Who, who's got grandchildren here in this group here? Okay, let me ask you guys, the three of you. If your grandchild behaved the same way that Donald Trump behaves in public, would you be proud? Just about this behavior. You would not, why not? Because it's not showing that spree de corps, that uh, acceptance of the results, whether you like them or not, but not because you're gonna take it lying down, but out of respect, the civility part of it. Doesn't mean that you agree with it. And we're gonna do something that's gonna surprise you all. I'm gonna ask you, I'm gonna ask you. We're gonna give you the last word. So you can never walk away from here saying that your voice wasn't heard and that people didn't care. So you blanched, so I'm gonna go with you first. How do you want to close this? I think, I think it was a great discussion tonight and uh, obviously appreciate all of the guests. And what we need to realize is that there's a reason there's so much doubt. You know, we, we see it, we see it in the media. We especially see it in social media. And you know, we, we, we say we're in the first amendment center or whatever, whatever this is called. But in today's world, does the First Amendment freedom of speech really exist anymore? And that's what and that's what and that's what a lot of us see. That's why a lot of us are frustrated. If you say something that they don't believe in, you get shut down. You get shut down. So that's where a lot of that frustration comes from. And I'll and, leave it at that. And not here. None of you were shut down. Last word, but we got to get out. So be quick. 
Well, first of all, I just want to thank everybody for coming out. This has been a fantastic experiment. Again, like I said before, we are all Americans. Whether you're Democrat, whether you're Republican, we're here together for the same cause, which is our country. And we need to know and understand that. It doesn't matter our age, our demographic, or the color of our skin. We are Americans, first and foremost. And we need to remember that because people from other countries come here clamoring for what we have. I've seen it firsthand. I've lived in South Florida. I've had Cuban friends and they come here for that. And, and I feel like sometimes we, we take it for granted and we want to throw it away for what other countries have. No, they come here for what we have. And we need to remember that. 